Radio Shouty. I lived in, in LA for five years, man. And what was that like for you, Gil? And what was it that made you say, you know what, I need to change the scenery and I'm about to just go over here in the West Coast a little bit for a little while? Well, I, I got, I'd always gone to the West Coast, you know, we'd always go. But when I was doing the records with Ali and Nelly, we stayed in L.A. Like, that was one of Nelly goddamn hot spots, boy. I'm talking about, boy, every record he dropped, boy, that thing was on radio out there, yeah. boy. They love Nail Dog out there. So I just stayed out there a lot. Like, and, you know, uh, I remember when Outkast did, uh, what was that, uh, the song they did with Sleepy, Can't Wait. And I was just like, man, I think we can stay out here a little while. And the first person stayed out there with three. Three were like, man, I'm about to stay out here. That's when he got on his health kick and all that. And he was like, man, all the little health food stores I can eat, I'm good. Yeah. So he was the first one to start staying out there. Then I moved out there with Nelly. We we went out there and then me and DJ and Sleepy had a house in the hills. And shit, I left there, came back home. And then that's when Lowe was like, yo, man, let's go do this voice shit. No, like, let go. You know what I mean? <laughs> so living in L.A. was always great to me because I was introduced to L.A. in the 90s on real L.A. Mm. Like, our first radio run in L.A. was Goody Mob, Dog Pound, and Triple Six Mafia. Ooh. So just imagine three three white vans pulling up and everybody at their rawest day. <laughs> exactly. Corrupt them, got a van full of crips. <laughs> <laughs> we got the goodie. Yeah. And and Paul then was so off the so Memphis then, it was just ridiculous. You know what I mean? Like Paul then was just something else then. It was just a something. You look over to them niggas be like, yeah, they gonna kill you. They gonna kill you, folks. <laughs> you know what I mean? So it's like menacing. It was like the great thing about LA is that, you know, when they when they took us through LA at that time, that's when rap didn't go to the stations. Yeah. You know what I mean? Our first performance in LA was at a record store in South Central mm-hmm. with Corrupt and Daz and watching how that gang shit got crunk fast. You know what I mean? So it's like first our first street run or they probably don't even do that shit no more like you know what i mean like we got in town took us to slauson swap meet then we went to mom and pop stores all in south central our last stop was long beach mm-hmm. at, the, at the at the where snoop them did the famous uh video yeah not that out bro and it just it introduced us to real L.A. off top. See, I can go in L.A. and I know what not to do and what to do. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I see how everybody riding around here with the jury on. Man, you got to understand, man. I ain't seen Shakira. I saw Shaq get robbed in L.A. <laughs> you know what I mean? I saw Shaq and the Bone Thugs and Harmony all laying out in the parking lot, face first, getting their jury took. And... Plenty of bloods, plenty of crips always came to us and said, y'all niggas always been off limits on both sides because OGs fuck with y'all because y'all put God in y'all music. Niggas know y'all what y'all run with, yep. but y'all always put God in it. When y'all had, you know, the serenity prayer yep. and stuff like that, that that made OGs on both sides say, hey, man, them niggas smarter than what they yeah. might appear. You know exactly. what I mean? Because they put God in it, and every gangster know about God. You know yeah. what I mean? So with that, they knew we knew that the, the, we we understood. Radio shouting. Shout-